Hi guys, welcome back. I'm here. Right, I'm just having a little bit of Sunday morning. Uh, well, same way it's not morning actually, it's afternoon now, it's the quarter one. God, time goes quick. A little bit of Sunday turning, that's all. I'm just turning some fun bits. Um, I'm turning some of these little Christmas trees here, look, like this. Nice little, nice little shiny, okay. They're not all to be the same, they're sim similar, but they're not all exactly the same. Nice shiny, clean cuts, nice finish. So I'm just turning a few of those. I'm just turning them out, some of these blanks I've got, I've rounded some off, so I've got little tenons on so I can put them in my chuck. And that's what I'm doing. So you're welcome to join me, okay? Um, thought I'd have a little chat as I go along. I know some of you don't like that, don't like long videos, but the amount of comments I've had from people, thank you so much, saying they do like it, and they do like me to talk through things, they like to hear what I want to say. Um, and they just like to watch me turn. So this is for them. You people know it all, got the t-shirt, had the catches, to the pip, and this is for the people that do want it. So there you go. Right, I'm going to use today my, um, <coughs> I've only used it for those other couple of trees. I'm using my O'Donnell jaws that I've got on this Axminster to give them a little try out. I like them, this is the reason, this is the sort of thing I've got them for. You know, with like work stuff, I have to do certain stuff so but this is my playtime and when I do my playtime and I want to just enjoy myself this is what I like doing little snowman little thing little Christmas I love this time of year because I can do all my Christmas trees and things like that I love that I get um I sort of run out of things what I'm going to turn other times of the year so I love this um and I love doing small projects and I love doing spindle work I really do love my spindle work so I'm putting this in now I got the O'Donnell jaws you can probably see it. I got these ones with the that take the inserts, so I got three in one. Really, I th I like that idea because I didn't know which ones I'd want, um, and it saves me chopping. So otherwise, I'd have to have three chucks. Well, no, I don't want another three chucks. Right, so I've put these ones in. These are the middle ones, which I think are the thirty eight, something like that. Oh, let me just bring that center up. I'm going to put the center there for a little, little bit while I do the main turner because I am out quite a way it's like five inches of of timber there and it's only on a small little dovetail so a little nip that's it tighten the nip don't need no more than that um yeah and that's what i'm going to use so i'm using me yeah i've done with yours um it's the reason i bought them actually because i like doing this sort of stuff and i've got these ones on my record power that come out because it's nice when you turn this sort of thing to be out out away from the the chuck and everything um, but these won't hold that smaller piece of wood if I put 10 on it. So I didn't have a set really that go down to that size. I've got these the smaller chucks and they will hold. Now I could use these ones, these are absolutely this my little tank, my my C1, but oh, look at the size difference on that. Bloody hell. That's the size of the wood, isn't it? I could hold that in the chuck and then put the wood in that one. But yeah, I could use these, but yeah, it's, it's, or get something can you if you want to say and get it right so there you go so that's why i got these so i can work out here i'll do a lot of this time for work and that's why i got them and they will will definitely earn their money so that's that that's got that um right the other thing i want to say about i did mention because i put the colossal jaws on the sk100 chuck um but the one of the main reasons i bought that chuck was because i said i got these jaws what i call my knuckle breaker jaws okay um they're, they're still mint they're brand new i got them when i bought that experience the lathe that was second hand and it came with the 100 chuck it had the c jaws and it had the two sets of these the inners and outers okay these are the recessed ones uh, that hold recesses these ones would go in and hold tenons okay um and basically i have an i never really got to use these at that time I only used what the jaws were and then I only had the I only used it for about a year and then I got this one and stopped using that one and I've got another Axminster one which isn't in here and I've got another lathe over there I've got a record power one so that one basically come came a bit redundant because it had quite a long bed on it um, and then for the last 10 years it's just been used I sort of chopped it down, made it into a sharpening system. Because I've had so many sharpening systems that I didn't like, so I made my own one. That's why I, why I did it. And that's the best sharpening system in the world. There is no sharpening system could ever beat that. That does everything 
from the biggest roughing gouge to the biggest bowl gouges to the tiniest little spindle gouge and I don't have to change anything. So that makes it fantastic. So getting back to these drawers. Yeah, I wanted these drawers in because they're nice. See, when these open out, I'm using the knuckle breakers because when you come out to hold anything, it's not too bad on me. I've got quite a bit of room, but these bits stick out, okay? And that's why, and, and these bits here, when it's turning, you've got all this. If you happen to catch a knuckle on that, yeah, you're gonna break your knuckle. But if you know it's there, you know it's there, didn't you? Don't do it, as simple as that. But I wanted them on. I wanted to be able to use these because I've got these, again, I've got these ones for holding little stuff little um if i'm doing finials or anything like that i've got these ones for it they're fantastic i don't knock those chucks they are absolutely bang on worth every single penny but i didn't have a, another set like this that had this nice long bit that can hold so these can hold finials but they can also come right out and hold quite big they're limited on what they can hold they don't come out very far so there you go but that was it guys so that's what i really wanted this size, this the 100 chuck, because these are for the 100. Whether they'd go in the 114, I don't know, I've not tried. So I should have tried really, and that would have been it. But anyway, that's why I wanted those. So there you go. Um, I know a lot of people think I was knocking axe mints to chucks. The other day when I've done my, um, oh my God, where's the, where's the fish? Um, and yeah, people thought that said something different, didn't they? See, where's the fish? That's what I want to get one of those hats. If you look on Temu, they do the hats and it's got OMG WTF. And then underneath it's got where's the fish? And that's what it means. See? People feed dirty minded people. We think something else, didn't they? Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, I'm not knocking the chucks. I think the chucks are fantastic. Lovely, well made, yeah, they're brilliant. Um, I'm just saying about the service. The service is really bad, the way people, Axe Mints are treat people. So there you go, that's my view anyway. Done, finished. Um, one thing I would say, which I think is a real shame, because I think these chucks would be the absolute best chuck you could buy in the world, if they'd done one thing, in my opinion. Because they make all these carriers, don't they? So the beauty of an Axe Minster chuck, you take the little security screw out that stops it coming right out. You can just wind them out and put new jaws in and they make extra carriers so you can buy the carrier and put the jaws on right so why don't you make a set of carriers and you know what i'm going to say why don't you make a set of carriers that can take all the record power jaws and that would also take all the sorby jaws and it would also take all the charm with jaws it would also take all the um nova nova jaws wouldn't it how fantastic would that be and you can use all your axe minster jaws you would have the option of so many types of jaws and a lot of people might want to buy your chuck but can't afford to be buying your jaws it's a fact guys i mean you know these o'donnell jaws 160 pound these g jaws 96 pound 57 pound for those ones these 126 pound okay um a lot of people say, oh, people's range. Well, why make it so that it's you, you're limiting yourself to people that just have got money to pay like that? You know, for me, it's like I said, it's no problem because of their own money. If you're just a little hobby turner, that's a lot of money to pay out, isn't it? I mean, I really would like a set of their, they call them, I call them shark jaws. They call them deep gripper jaws. Um, Charm would call them ripple jaws. And... Vic Mark call them shark jaws. So I always call them shark jaws. That's what I think of them as. And I've got them for this, okay? And they are fantastic. They'll hold absolutely anything. There's nothing the Axminster ones would hold that these won't. Apart from the fact, on the Axminster chuck, I would have more opening, which sometimes I open these up, they come out to their max, you know, and it is really annoying, because these are one of them, I'll do some turning in a minute. Um, I open these up, right now now record power chucks i don't know whether any of you know or, or and nova chucks when when they open there are no screws with these you've got that little security screw you take out and you can then just wind and the jaws come out okay on this chuck here this has a little security screw there 
take that out you can just wind it and take the drawers out and change it now this chuck i don't know don't even ask me what my, i don't know i bought this god it's got to be about 15 years ago off of ebay it's such a beautiful it's a direct thread it's got this lovely solid metal it's a bit like the vitmark chucks and that it's got a nice um indexing bit on the back it is so solid and chunky that's the only set of jaws i've got for it okay i don't know the makes so i don't know whether i can get any others and that was i think that was 70 quid i bought that now i am talking 15 years ago but but it was 70 quid and i bought it off of ebay and absolutely fantastic it was brand new it is, I don't know whether it was a Chinese one or what it is, but it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and I've had that for a lot, a long time, and I've used it a hell of a lot. Um, I bought a second, I bought went on there a, a little bit late and bought another one, and it had a wobble. And I don't, I, I couldn't work what it was. I, I, you know, I checked everything. It just had a very slight wobble to it. Um, and I bought it off here. I weren't going to send it back to where it come from. Um, I just didn't bother. I took the jaws off it, took the runners out, the, you know, the, oh, you know what they're called, you know, the carriers. I took the carriers out of it, these things. And I just kept them all as spares and I just threw the chuck body away. That was it. It was something wrong with the threads. But yeah, getting back to it, sorry. These, this is the maximum. When you go inside these, these don't have any screws. What it is, it's actually on the scroll. It, it, folds over so that's what stop when it comes to there it stops so you can't take anything out or do anything so that these can wind out it won't won't happen um to get them out you have to uh, take that sir clip take this plate off and then um take these out take the ring out and then you can get the carriers out and that's how you have to do it so a lot of mucking about if you wanted to do that and change jaws that way but what happens to me see that locks that's it and i'm normally about five or six mil out from being able to put a square piece of wood in there and hold it so that's why i would really like i was losing where i was even talking about i've forgotten about that actually right that's why i would really like the axe minster ones sharp jaws what i call sharp jaws because they'd open up well. But the thing is, the Axe Minster ones are £121. These are the Charmwood ones, over £35. So there you go. Now, for people that, you know, I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna buy a set of the, what's it, I'm probably getting when I go to Harrogate, because I'm not gonna get, want them to send me something they can piss off. Um, I'll go and get them if they've got them at Harrogate. If they haven't got them, then, well, whatever, I'll do something at some time, I'm not gonna rush, it's not a desperate need for me. But now for people that, you know, if you ain't, if you if you're just hobby turning and stuff like that, do you really want to pay 121 pounds for another set of jaws on top of what you've already paid? But if you could buy the carriers and then buy yourself a set of those and a set of these ones and these up from Record Power, I mean, Axe Minister don't do these nice long ones and they're a fantastic one. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just put those on there? Just a thought, guy. You know, some carriers be nice, but. I'm afraid, I think it's fantastic that Sorby, um, Record Power, Nova, and Charmwood, I don't know whether they ever got together and discussed it or what they did, but they've all made them, that their, their, their jaws all fit each other's chucks. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. What a fantastic thing for woodturners. But I'm afraid Axminster, if you want to use Axminster, then you're in their bubble, aren't you? You've got to be in their little Axminster bubble and you can't go anywhere else. I don't like that, I think that's really bad, so. But maybe it's a downfall on them, I don't know. Someone put a comment on my on that one that um apparently they're closing another three stores. Whether it's true, I don't know. Don't shoot me. Um because she said the Cardiff one's going. So who knows? There you go. Maybe you should be thinking more about helping people rather than just emptying their pockets. Who knows? I don't know. It's nothing to do with me. What was I gonna do anyway? I'll turn a Christmas tree. Right, yeah. Right, I went fishing yesterday again caught three nice flounders again i had two lisa had one we did video some of it but i've oh got the wind it was so bad you can't use the video it was lisa's fault i did turn not to have the vindaloo but there you go um oh, it's so so windy but anyway we're, we're filming the next one we go right what am i going to do i'm going to start turning this otherwise there'll be no turning done will there right hang on you can't what are you standing over there for you can't see nothing over there come around here let's get you around here 
Right, sorry, don't get seasick. Right, there we go. Let's pull you up there. Bring you around here. I'll try and get this without knocking the camera, and I'll try and do it without. Um, I'll pull you just to about there. That should do you. You should see everything. Hopefully, I won't get in the way of the camera, and you won't get in the way of me for turning. Right, okay. Let's do a little Christmas tree. Let's start up. Yeah, I wasn't knocking Axe Minster as Axe Minster, like the products. The products are good. I know the products are good. Sorry, you're just a little bit in my way there. I'm just going to move you to here while I rough down, okay? I'll bring you in like that. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. Right, that's better. That's better for me. Right. Yeah, I mean, people make comments about, oh, well, their chucks are made. There, I don't really care where their chucks are made. I don't care what they're made of. I don't need to know any of that. All I want to know is if I give you my money, I want my, what I've bought, don't I? I don't want a load of excuses. I mean, that's no good to anyone. Right, I'm just going to get a slight taper on that. Like I say, this is how I do mine. You do yours your way, I'll do mine my way. But if you're not sure, then, well, this is the way you can do it. I've done stuff with the carbide on the last one, so I'm just using my spindle gouge, okay? Now, can you see? Oh yeah, I think you can, let me just put the chisel there. You can see everything from there, can't you? I'll move you around just a little bit. Yeah, you can see it all from there. Right, okay, I'm just going to make a few little cuts here. Now, I don't mark nothing up, I just got, I like to do this all by eye, okay? So I'm going to come in there like that. I'll finish that top later once I move that, okay? I literally, I want to make it and see how it gets to where I am. This isn't the finished um, bits because I will go back over it. I just like to work out the sizes. As I go along. So I can look at each one and just make sure that that one's very slightly bigger than that one and, you know. Now at the moment, the fishing, we're waiting for the cod to come in. You know, hopefully there'll be some cod about soon. Right, that's going to be okay about there, I reckon. I'm just cutting in with my spindle gouge. Remember, put your flute right over and cut. Okay, and then here we want to cut. Cut and put your bevel on. Try and put your bevel on, then cut. Cause you to skip. Alright. I'll put a line there and just have a look at it and see whether... It, yeah, that looks perfect. Just bring that in and I'll just take a little cut here. Just clean up there. That's it. We've got our cut there already. So I'll just go down like this to see. Basically see how many I get. I'll get to about here. And then I'll do for the bucket. I like a bucket on my tree because Christmas trees are normally in a bucket, aren't they? They have to be in a bucket because then when you pull the decorations on it, they always fall over, don't they? It's like tradition of Christmas. It's all part of Christmas. The fun of Christmas is the memories of when you was a kid. You know? Dad using one of the old buckets and throwing a load of bricks in the bottom to give it a bit of stability. And then wrapping it in wrapping paper and make it look like it's a Christmas bucket. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then all the pine, all the pine needles in the carpet afterwards that you had to get rid of. Well, I think that'd be uh, about there, I reckon. That one, and this will be the last one.
Yeah, that was long before the non-drop ones, non-drop Christmas tree became available. Yeah, and before we got an artificial one, then we went artificial. Yeah, mum used to moan like mad, hoovering up the, the pine needles for months after Christmas. <laughs> right, I'm just coming in with part and tool. Not going too far in because I haven't finished this bit yet. Right, so this is going to be for my um, thump bit at the bottom. Right, it's only going to be a, a small tree, so and I'm going to come in here to where the bottom of my bucket's going to be. Right, now I'm just to there. I've got to be careful, I don't want to watch it with jaws, but I've got to come in very close on that bottom, see? Because it's um, not a massive bit of wood, but I want to get as much out of it as I can, so there you go. Right, now I'm going to just come in and get all these. I'll do all this, like I say, it's handy if you can turn left and right handed. I'll do all this left handed because then I ain't got to stand down this way and have the, you know, be going the wrong way. Now, what I might do actually, I think you might see better than what I'm doing if I bring you round to here and put you there. I can't have you, sorry, let's take you out a little bit. You're a bit too close to me. Get too up and personal there, guys. Right, that'll do ya. I can't have you over this side, around this way, because I don't have the route, and I'm standing here, and you'll you'll be in my way. So I have to. That's where I can have you. Okay. Where I can have you. That sounds a bit right. Come in here. Oh, that was a little catch. That was a bugger, weren't it? That shouldn't have happened. Come on. Luckily, I've got room because they're not down to their finished length yet. Oh, well, depending, I can feel a chip on that. I might have just ruined that one. That was, no, I think I might save it. That's a little bit of a bugger, that. No, that wasn't meant to happen. Let's see. Yeah, I think that little chip's gone. No, I don't know, I think it might still be there. I'll take this one down a little bit. I can adapt it as I go. I was just, I wasn't concentrating there and I've just got that little... Right, okay. We are back on track. So I'll so just look at, um, I, I think there's still something there actually. I, I, what I do, because I don't want to stop it now and put another one on, I'm going to just... If I've got it, then you're going to know that that's the stupid thing not to do, is get a catch, okay? Basically, just, it happens to everyone, just catch it. I just come down, turn my chisel very slightly, and it caused it to jump up. I'm going to take that, I can't afford to take another little... Ah, it's gone. That's gone. All right, let me have a look at it. Yeah, that, that should be okay if I come in with this one a little bit more. So I didn't quite close the flute enough. And as I come up, I just caught, I just caught that edge there. But well, I didn't catch it. It actually threw me out. It, suddenly it realised I was cutting it and it pulled bugger off. Right, there we go. We're all right on that. Oh, I think that could go a little bit deeper there. I love this guy. I'm not, you know, this isn't anything for, for work or money. I'm just having a play. So I really like, I like to take my time and really enjoy what I'm doing here. I think this tree's going to end up a bit shorter actually because I think that's going to look a bit silly being that long because I have to go thinner. Okay, so I'm gonna I think that's gonna end up being the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this down. 
it's got to be a smaller tree it's just a change of plan because of um, divine interference basically it changed my design but never mind these things happen to all of us if anyone says it never happens to them they're lying right there we go this is going to be the top now and it's going to be a nice little small tree this one I'm going to cut this in here Nice and gentle, just roll the tool, roll the tool, roll the tool. Bring this into a little point here. And this is just so I'm going to take this away and then get, get rid of that, that bit off of that. Right, I'm now going to let this cut through. Come on, disappear. Come on. There we go. Now we have to take some nice gentle cuts just to That's it. I want the tree to be a little bit on the pointy side. I think I think personally I don't know about you guys, I think the top's a little bit big. Could give a, a, a taper like that, shouldn't it? So there you go, it does it now. There, that's how I'm going to leave that. Right, I'll do a little bit for this bucket. Obviously, this is going to be a lot smaller now. This bucket, don't do that. I knew that was coming, so I stopped it before it hit the chuck. I've got to get my partner's tool. Again, using a nice thin partner's tool. This has turned out to be a bitty little tree, this one. Right, now if I go that way and that way, by twisting it, I'll get a nice clean finish on the trunk, see? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here quite a little bit closer, come on, like that. Okay, that's going to be my bucket and then I'll part that off at that when I'm nearer to being done. I'm just going to come in and take a little bit of this away. Bucket I want just slightly smaller than the last, the bottom um, thingy bother me, what you call it, branchy thing. Right now, I'm going to use, I've got a, a thin sort of skew and I'm going to use this just to come in if it's going to allow me. Yes it is. And I'm going to do it on here as well. I just want to come in here. Come on. That's it. That gives me a clean finish on the bottom of those pieces then and I won't have no tear out. Because I mean, it looks horrible if you got all tear out on that. Right, and then what I'm going to do here, I haven't finished the bucket size yet. I'm going to take a little, little thing like that. And then what I want to do, I want to put a little, I like to use my spindle gouge to do this. Put a line for that. Because I like the, the taper that I get from the spindle gouge when I put the wire in. Okay, that's the only way I use that and I don't use a skew or any other sort of tool. And I can put a little burn in there like that. And then... When you burn it, obviously when you've done a tight sort of thing like that, you'll get the, the yellow in here where the, the heat, so leave enough room so you can take that final cut. And that cleans it up and we're going to do a little thing like that on the bottom. And that's it, that's going to be my bucket, okay? That all feels all right to me, so I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on it. So I'll take my face shield off for a minute and then you'll hear me, alright? So yeah, I mean, 
like I say, I think these are fantastic chops. But wouldn't that? Don't you think that would be good, guys? If if you could actually buy the carriers, so you could put all your record power jaws and Nova jaws and stuff. Then you can buy. I mean, if you're obsessed like me, I mean, I'm obsessed with different jaws because I like I like them. You can have all the jaws, then, can't you? How many jaws can you buy? You know without having to get different chucks you know I mean I'm I'm a bit I said before I don't like having to change jaws even the fact of I don't, I've got a couple of sets here that I don't mind if I unscrew it and put them in and screw it up but I don't like having to change jaws I would much rather pick a chuck up and just put it on I don't really want to, have to change jaws let me just pull you out a little bit because you're going to be quite close up there right there you go I'll pull you out just a just a little bit like there okay there you go um, yeah so for me when I buy jaws I tend to buy a chuck for it to go on that's just me just a little bit sanding and then what I want to do I want to go up there like that and then all I, I like to do this way because I don't want any sharpness to these I don't want to turn them and actually turn bit I just want to do that that's it that's brilliant okay and then in here ain't really going to take any sanding because I've done that with a skew and cleaned that off and then my little bit on my bucket there you go and there we go that probably is a little bit fat there but that's nah, alright it's, it's okay it's good I'm happy with that right now for finishing I'm going to use my shellac you know my um I call whatever you want to, if you want to call it a shine juice you want to, I just call it my shellac okay it's basically a like friction polish so I'm going to give it a good shake up and I don't slow the lathe down I don't turn the lathe off I do it like this I actually got this amounts dead right for me to be able to do this now I use a little bit of that's a little bit of towel okay now obviously if you don't I don't like to use tissue for this I won't, I won't use tissue it will it will pull it and make it stick on there I don't I don't like that the way I use it I can't I have to use this now basically I'm just getting in there now what I will do is put the, the shellac onto the middle of this then fold it and then for this I can oh, get it in here now I'm only holding it between two fingers if it was to catch which it won't but if it did I it will just pull it out of my hand and there'd be no harm done okay it's not going to catch on anything there you go I'm going to even put some on the bucket there get that around put on the bucket and now I'm going to just put a little bit of pressure there build up a little bit of heat that get it to set there it goes look at that stops moving that's perfect beautiful and shiny put it in there keep it on here just a little bit of pressure there we go look at that a little bit of pressure this turned out to be a piddly little tree didn't it eh? Christ I'm going to be disappointed eh? so you put in your order for a tree think you're going to get a seven foot tree and a piddly little three foot one turns up Never mind. I did actually think I think someone said about the um, the Rutland jaws fit the record power chucks as well. I'm not sure. I don't know. I've never tried. I've got a Rutland chuck up there. Um, that's got a 1.8 TPI. It's a small one though. That's only their little one. I bought that. That's donkey's years old. That is. Um, and I just have a set of wooden chucks, with wooden jaws on it. I don't actually use it so much well I do use it I use it when I do scoops and stuff but I don't put it on these lathes because it's got to have uh, I'll show you that. it's a 1.8 TPI and it's got to have a thread adapter like that on it I don't know why they make these so bloody big but anyway so yeah that's a, a Rutland's one a small one came with these jaws and everything that, that's got to be 15 years 16 years old that chuck come in one of those packages where you get all the different jaws absolutely fantastic but um, I only use it for those wooden ones now because I don't like turning things with the with all the bits on it anyway that's done I don't want to fight about with that that's done now there you go so 
so yeah, I just think really Axminster are missing out because I think you know there's a lot of people that would buy their chuck who can't afford to buy it maybe I don't know for whatever reasons don't want to buy it that would actually buy the chuck if they could put the other jaws on it you know so there you go right I'm gonna park this off um, remember learn to park with your left hand don't lean over the chuck very silly thing to do I'm going in this way I'm just gonna go in There we go. Look at that. Lovely. Right, stop that. Right, okay, I'm going to put that there and I'm going to sand that bottom off from that. Okay. I'll be with you in two seconds. Just putting my tools back, you know. Always put my tools back. Let's bring you out a little bit. Uh, no, that's in. A donut, eh? Let's bring you out a little bit. Put you there like that. Uh, right now I've put these drawers in I don't know how this is going to work actually whether this can take my my sanding thing or not I don't really know get that out uh, yeah, yeah I think it will my arbors they're pretty good my see I make my arbors to work with all chucks not just certain ones knock knock there you go look at that even fits in there I'm going to take this off and put another pad on because that's really a bit knackered that one. Let me just get another another pad out. There we go. Stick another pad on that. Nice and clean and fresh. There we go. Look at that. Pucker. Right. Now I've just got to make sure. Yep, yeah, that's flat. Look at that. Straight away. My God, I should become a professional. Oh, I'll keep picking up. That's another thing. I'll keep picking up the wrong chuck key. Tomorrow. See, that's another thing. It's, it, it's it's not a problem. I'm not moaning about it. Their chuck keys are not magnetic. They're not magnetic. The handle bit is, but it's got the rubber. I wouldn't. That would probably rattle off of there. I don't know. I might. It might stay on if I magnet it on but that one I put on there so this one I tend to keep up there and I keep picking up the wrong bloody chuck is why well, you shouldn't have so many chucks I suppose should you is what people would say right I've still got a bit of shellac on here that will be enough to rub that bottom and if I get it right and I give it a quick a bit of pressure it will even shine there we go beautiful so there we go guys there's another little yes yeah, see i know don't start i know it turned out a bit small it's not my fault is it you know the chisel got a catch it wasn't my fault i didn't there we go but we got rid of it we just made it a little bit smaller so we didn't waste the turning we just had to go a little bit smaller which if you think about it i'm not making excuses so don't even start on that one if you think about it when you put them in a little group like that you want different sizes don't you really see you want different sizes like so there we go look at that there we go look see beautiful look how shiny they are that looks like a forest now doesn't it that looks fantastic they are start the bidding who wants them right anyway let's bring you out a bit that's my little turn in this has only been about sort of 40 minutes you can spare 40 minutes if you can't spare 40 minutes in your life well you're doing something seriously wrong ain't you and just think about it if you're watching me what better can you do right anyway just more little ideas guys little things to do. it's not actually ideas is it i'm not giving you an idea there's bloody people been turning christmas trees for for donkeys i'm just having a little bit of fun on a sunday that's all it is for me um yeah that's all i'm doing all right pop that off i'll tell you what you stick these um oops, you stick these o'donnell jaws on with these inserts in this child and i've make a weight christ 
you all want that there? Land on your foot, would you? So anyway, there you go, guys. Yeah, um, these jaws, absolutely love. I'm going to put that chuck on a minute, just so I can show you what I was actually talking about. See, there we go. And that's why the reason they call them knuckle breakers because it's like this here. You know, they don't do them out of the steel no more. What are you doing there? Get out of it. Anyway, what's the bidding up to already? Anyone started bidding on these yet? Go and put a bid in. See what we get up to. Right. Anyway, um, yeah. The reason they, they don't do them like that now, they do them out of an aluminium. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why, because the aluminium, all right, they round the ends here, do them a little bit rounded, make it softer. <sighs> aluminium is still what don't matter, does it? It's still gonna break, you catch your knuckle on it, you're gonna break your knuckle. You just have to be careful, guys. It's as simple as that. When you're turning them, you have to be careful. Now, I haven't got a piece of wood like I was saying about, but so I have them for, just holding some really small pieces so I, I haven't got anything but no oh, look so this is uh, oh this is just something i was playing it's not so i'm turning it was something i was playing about with and it's like little oh, bloody chucky again isn't it? so it's little things like this see so i can pop that in there and bang there you go look so i can hold them little things that's what i want them for you know i can hold it in there and that's magic that is and you just got to be careful when you're turning here that you don't just don't put your knuckle by there do you you just you know it's fine it's not a problem so there you go that's those jaws anyway i thought i'd show it because i know when i said it um you know and i call them knuckle breakers and stuff like that people wonder what they are what i'm the hell i'm talking about because they're not you go don't go on x minsters <laughs> page and look for knuckle breakers because they're not there <laughs> it's just something i call them you know because uh, believe me you whack your knuckle on that it will break it <laughs> i don't need to do it to know i know how to do it right so yeah that's that guys actually i don't know whether that would hang on a minute one second one second does that hold that that ring let's see now so if i was to actually take that in that go on the second one all right oh yes it does and that doesn't go with that's flush as well oh there you go see these rings uh x minutes i told you buggered up there didn't you you didn't know that did you see they fit the record power one see the record power ones don't fit on these ones because they have their c joy ones c jaw ones don't they and these don't fit on on these ones um and i only use those little face plates like i've said before on my little sanding things so now i can actually put my sanding thing on oops that's unscrewed because i didn't even screw it on right on the yeah, axe to chuck Ah, Axe Minster, you buggered up there. You, you things fit on a record power one. Oh my God, what is going to happen? Yeah, these go down to a real small. I'll show you actually. This is this is what more I was on about. They go down to that size. See, virtually zero, tiny little, and it's like a little square. Do you know the thing with these? And you know, I'm not knocking record power because I, I I like my record power stuff these ones right and the, and these ones these ones here which are for doing this sort of stuff right they go round okay and these ones go round and that's why with these ones i did it on a video i know some other people less less professional and experienced people have done them as well um they do have done it on this one what i did was i i actually closed them up full and then i used a, a 6.5 mil drill bit and drilled into it okay on these chucks and the reason i did that because they just wouldn't hold things properly when you put a little spindle in there and you're turning if you or if you're turning that way but if you're turning that way it would pull it out it just couldn't get a grip so when you drill down inside it don't be scared to do it it's, it, it works just don't bug your jaws up obviously but see these things they don't turn again boom stop 
yeah so all it done is it put this this little if you can see this little groove in here so it just ends up getting a bite it gives a little bite onto the piece and it actually it made them brilliant you know the only thing with these these ones i've got them i love them as i said love me but apart from holding things like that there is nothing else you can do with them because they haven't got a you can't hold a, a, a mortise or anything or a, a tenon with it because one they don't open big enough um they were smooth so it come out so yeah it's quite bad actually i don't know whether they've done anything about it or changed it on them but if you have if you've got them and you have that problem just do it yourself guys a 6.5 mil drill bit i've got a video when i've done it i think i've done it i don't know whether i've done it on video well anyway just put it on put your screw chuck your drill chuck in there 6.5 mil drill bit don't turn it too fast you want about um you want about a thousand rpm and then just basically drill straight into it and that will open it up and put those grooves in and then it becomes brilliant the biggest letdown with those i thought and because seeing as all the record power the s uh sc4s and sc3s they will all take, um, like as I said, Charmwood jaws and all that sort of stuff. Now Charm would do for their Viper 2, the small ripple jaws, like shark jaws. But I don't know why they did it. For some reason, Record Power, when they made these, they don't actually take anyone else's jaws. And look, the, the Viper 2 chuck is the same sort of size as that, but it only comes in a 180 TPI. So you could, you've got to have to use a thread adapter and that's just horrible thread adapter chuck out here you know um and this is a direct thread m33s why didn't they do it so that these would take the charm with jaws because they're limited or make some better some more jaws for these guys because these jaw these chucks are fantastic lovely little size little pieces i'd like a set of shark jaws for that i really would so there you go that's my little mo now I, yeah so sorry when this closes that's it it's square so it grips you could turn anything in there it grips them and that's what it does so i just have to leave them open a little bit for my mounting system okay which is as simple as that. boom don't that look pretty up there right so that's that guys um yeah, now I know they, there's a. I've never used this, so someone might put it in a comment if they've if they've had one. You get the Versa chuck, and the Versa chuck you buy different carriers for it, so you can make your own chuck up. You say what you want, and that's how you get. I don't know what the chucks are like. I've never used one, but the Versa chucks. Sorry, can you see, actually see what I'm talking about there? Oh yeah, you can see me. I just thought, you know, all the women out there, you'd be disappointed if you couldn't actually see me. Um, yeah, so the actual Versa chucks, you can buy the carriers, and you can get the carriers that actually take Axminster Jaws, all those ones, obviously, and um, Vicmark ones and stuff like that. So that just make it a bit more, wouldn't it? But I don't know what they're like. So I know if some people said they're all right, but if anyone knows what they're like, put a comment in. I didn't go for one of those because I didn't want another four-inch chuck I wanted the bigger chuck i wanted the expanse that's the only reason i wanted jaws that i couldn't get anywhere else and i wanted that a little bit more i was going to get a vic mark but vic mark don't do enough jaws they don't do anything different to what i've got and they're the same vic mark chucks i only take vic mark jaws i don't like to be held to that and the only place in the uk i think actually doesn't was uh simon hope i wouldn't go to him anyway uh and every time i looked on there shark jaws and that out of stock out of stock out of stock so what's the point if you can't buy the jaws what's the point of buying a chuck so there you go that was the reason behind that guys so anyway that's about it i think i think i'm talked out now well not i've talked forever but yeah anyone wants to know anything else about what i used uh, always just drop me a line and i'll answer you but that's it and as i said these jaws are the same things they just drop in but these are the other ones which will hold mortises so and they're stepped so it's like having the step jaws there which i've got not that i actually find step jaws a lot of good personally um step jaws right now again so you can hold three different sizes here of tenon yeah but 
unless you've got a bowl that is like that which is more like a vase you can't use the inside one because if you've got a bowl that's a bit bigger it unless you're going to use a tenon that's about that long you can't get onto that bottom one so that's why i find that a bit you'd have to actually make it fit in there and you you've got to be so careful because you don't want your tenon to bottom out on that so you can't do that your tenon should actually sit and in nicely there and the outside bit should sit flush on that to get it to be in there that, that, I just find step jaws are pretty much a waste of time. I only ever use that size there, um, that size, the outer one. I thought they were good, but no, really, they're not. I don't ever use those in. I've never actually mounted anything on the inside too. I've only mounted on the outside one. So, but these were again. These were. I think they were a record power or a, no, no, they're not. They've got an N on them, so they are the Charmwood ones because they're the Nexus ones. So that was only like 30 quid and 35 quid. So I got a set because it was a set of jaws I haven't had. You never know. One day I might just have that one job that I can't hold on anything else. And I can put it on that. And that was it. So that's it, guys. Um, yeah, that's about it. Anyway, right. Thanks for joining me. It's a Sunday. So I'm going to carry on and do a bit more stuff. I like to do a bit of skew practice. Um, just, well, you know, keep going. Do my skews. I tend to do that, um, I tend to use two skews, I put one in each hand and come that way and that way if I'm just practicing, gets you, get these, don't don't use this, this isn't for that, you know, use, use get your arms moving, Get learn to use your arms and your wrists so you can do all the cuts and all the fancy work, right I'm going to come around there and I'm going to turn you off and I'll see you on the next one guys, have a nice Sunday, toodle pip.